Hello, hello, hello! Or shall I say tjena, 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 as we say in Swedish. Anyway, I'm glad that you all could be here today and join us for this lecture. And you know, the topic is still about machine vision. And today we are going to discuss about the lens system. Because the lens system is very, very important for a machine vision system. It is part of the image capture. And you wouldn't believe how important the lens system is for me personally. Yeah. So, I think we should start today with discussing about lens system from the perspective of a very simple pinhole camera which is a tiny tiny hole that allows the light to go through this hole and be projected on the surface. And then we will continue with discussion about the Gaussian optics and the lens formula that is based on refraction. Uh, there are also a number of uh, properties that you should know about the lens system like the pupil magnification, the principal dips, distance, the depth of field and how diffraction in the lens will limit the resolution and the difference between diffraction limited resolution and the real world resolution of a lens. Uh, we will finalize with discussing a telecentric lens and the property of a telecentric lens. I want to <coughs> continue this presentation with having a quick look into what's inside a camera. And first of all, we find the image sensor, which is a, a two dimensional array of photosensitive detectors, sometimes also referred to as a focal plane array. Anyway, it is the sensor that captures the image. And this sensor is controlled by some additional embedded hardware system that at the same time is controlling the transfer of captured image data onto a communication interface for further communication into the external system to a frame grabber or another kind of uh, embedded hardware. Uh, but what we have here in front of the camera is a uh, the lens system and the lens is supposed to capture a light that is reflected or emitted from object and project uh, this scene onto this uh, focal plane array. And I'm now planning to continue <coughs> the presentation of the lens system with showing you a diagram of a pinhole camera. And a pinhole camera is something that was used back on in the early, very early ages of uh, photography. It is basically a box. And what they had inside this box was some kind of film, uh, a surface that was sensitive, uh, has a chemical sensitivity to light, which could further be developed using chemical processes. But for the lens system, they only used a tiny, tiny, small hole. And you can see here a principal sketch of the object on this side. And you can see the corresponding projected image of the object on the focal plane uh, side. And since this tiny hole here is very, very small, uh, any array that is reflected or emitted from this object the only ray, independent of which direction the rays are uh, going, uh, only the ray that passes through this hole will be projected on the position where we expect this part of the object to also be projected. Um, and you can understand that the, the focus then of uh, uh, the imaged object will be dependent on the size of this tiny hole and it is important to keep the hole small and very tiny. Um, we have a mathematical formula for this projection that is based on the fact that uh, this angle alpha will be the same on the object side as well as on the camera side, on both sides of this tiny hole. And we can express this as the tangents of alpha as uh, h prime divided by c equal to h divided by s. 
and this will be equal to two times the tangents of this angle alpha and now we can have a relation between at different distances inside the camera from this projection hole how large the projection of the corresponding object will be dependent on the distance from the object to the camera and to further give you an illustration about this simple lens system I made my own small experiment using a USB camera a small uh, camera with a CCD sensor inside and with a USB interface for communication with a computer uh, what you see here uh, is the small uh, USB camera and on the position where normally the uh, lens is assembled there is a plastic cover and I took this plastic cover and simply drilled a very tiny small hole through the plastic that you can see here it's a 0.8 millimeter hole that I drilled through this protective cap uh, that can be placed uh, on the position of the camera where you normally are uh, having a lens assembled and I was aiming with this camera uh, onto the ceiling where there is uh, a tube uh, light for illumination of my office area in my workplace and what you see here is the image that was projected through this tiny hole onto the CCD sensor and how it has been uh, projected and visualized on a computer yeah you can understand that the resolution uh, and the sharpness of this image is very bad and uh, this uh, lens system with this tiny hole does not have enough of resolution to cope with the small tiny pixels of four or five micrometer on the focal plane array of this uh, sensor inside the camera yeah the uh, limited amount of light that comes through the pinhole camera is of course the uh, major disadvantage with that kind of simple optics uh, so we need to to have a look at how we can design optics and using optics based on another kind of principle that can collect more of light onto the image detector and the Gaussian optics is using the uh, basic phenomenon of refraction of light in order to to focus a light onto the image detector uh, what we see here is uh, a borderline here between two different medium mediums that are transparent to light uh, and uh, these two mediums they have two different uh, what is called refractive index n1 and n2 and the refractive index of a medium and I is defined as uh, the speed, the highest speed of light, C, uh, in vacuum, divided by the speed of light in that medium, VI. And the speed of light in different mediums, such as plastic, glass, in air, will be different. So we will get different uh, refractive in indexes of different mediums. Um, there is a, in this diagram uh, a normal this line is the normal to uh, the borderline between the two different mediums and we see here an incoming principal light ray that uh, comes into the intersection, between, intersection point between this borderline and the normal and there is stemming and an output light uh, ray uh, principal ray from the intersect from the same intersection point but the angle uh, to the normal is different it is alpha 1 for the incoming principal light ray and it is alpha 2 for the outgoing principal light ray due to the phenomenon of uh, refraction and the relation between these two angles alpha 1 alpha 1 and alpha 2 is defined by the law of refraction which is uh, defined as 
n1 uh, multiplied with sine s of alpha 1 equals n2 uh, multiplied with sine s of alpha 2. So the sine s of the angles and n1 and n2 are equal uh, to uh, the refractive indexes of the corresponding medium. And the fact that the, the light ray is actually bending, uh, this phenomenon is used in the Gaussian optics in order to focus the incoming light ray onto uh, the focal plane array in the camera to make a projection of the image. This relation is a non-linear relation, but then for small angles, uh, angles it can be approximated like this as a as a, a linear relation. But because for very small angles, uh, then the sinus of alpha two is approximately the same as uh, alpha two. I'm now going to continue this presentation about Gaussian optics by presenting to you a diagram showing the, the principle behind an optical lens and the principal light rays and how they are actually um, uh, bend in the optics due to refraction and how we are utilizing uh, this bending of the light ray, rays in order to focus the incoming light from objects onto the focal plane array. Um, so if we have a look at this diagram for uh, a Gaussian optics, uh, this is the, the lens itself um, and with respect to the lens there is an axis, an optical axis. And then there are a number of parameterized distances and parameterized positions in these diagrams that are defined uh, in order to support uh, the laws of a lens system, the laws of a Gaussian optics. And I think we can start with the first one uh, that states that a uh, light ray, principal light ray, uh, that is incoming uh, parallel to the optical axis uh, will pass through uh, this focal point f prim at the output. Um, we see the principal incoming parallel light ray here and on the output light ray that passes through uh, the focal point f prim. And there is an uh, intersection point between the incoming light ray and the outcoming, uh, outgoing light ray. Uh, and at this intersection point there is something called a principal plane. Um, and the position of this principal plane at the optical axis is called a nodal point, n prim and p prim for the principal plane. The distance from this uh, principal plane to the point where we have the image in focus uh, at the focus plane is called s prim. We can continue with the next law, uh, stating that a ray passing through uh, the focal point f on the input, it will leave the lens parallel to the optical axis. Uh, so there is a, a, a balance between these two uh, laws, these two statements. Here you have an incoming ray that passes through the uh, focal point. And then again, we have an intersection point between the incoming light ray and the outgoing parallel light ray. And at this intersection point, you have another principal plane, P, uh, whose position on the optical axis is defined by the nodal point, N. Um, the distance from this principal plane uh, to the object that we are imaging, uh, this is the object and this is the projection of the object on the focal plane. This distance between the, the, the principal plane and the object is called S, defined as S. We continue with the next law that says that a ray passing through this nodal point N on the input uh, will also uh, pass through the, the other nodal point N prim without changing its angle with the optical axis. 
So this is the incoming principal ray that passes through the nodal point on the input and from the nodal point on the output there is a light ray uh, uh, going to the focal plane that has exactly the same angle as the incoming light ray. And altogether independently then from this uh, object uh, on the, that is the, whose height is parameterized as h independently in what kind of direction the light rate is, is uh, uh, going uh, to the, uh, the lens. The idea is that all this light rate will always be focused on the same point on the uh, imaging plane in focus. Um, this is the whole idea because then you can also collect more of light. Now if we make use of these uh, laws for Gaussian optics uh, and the principal light rays that we drew in the previous diagram and we try to describe the geometric relation between these principal uh, light rays with respect to the optical axis and we describe it in a mathematical form it should be possible to end up at the definition of the lens that is usually the, referred to as the Gaussian lens formula which is the goal for the next few minutes of my presentation. If we look at this diagram uh, again uh, we have the object here on the left side and we have the projected object on the focal plane on the right side and what we should make uh, clear in the beginning is that Horizontal distances uh, on the right side are defined as positive and horizontal distances on the left side are defined as negative. And equally vertical distances above the optical axis are defined as positive and vertical distances below the optical axis is defined as negative. Um, we start uh, by utilizing the fact according to the laws of uh, uh, the lens that these two light rays should have the same uh, angle with respect to the optical axis thus the tangents of, the, of these two angles should be the same and here I have expressed the tangents of H' prim divided by S' prim, uh, which sh should be tangents of this angle is equal to the tangents of H divided by S which is the tangents of this angle and they should both be equal to tangents of alpha if we call both these two angles uh, we refer to them as alpha and from this we can define the amplification which is the relation between the size of the object and the size of the projected object um, being equal as the the um, the quote between uh, the distances to the focal plane and to the distance from the object to uh, to the lens. If we can continue in an equal way, and we now will define the tangents of this angle and this angle to be the equal, and we will end up at this formula. Uh, we can continue and do the same on this side where the tangents of this angle will be equal to the tangents of, of this angle. And from these two equations it should be possible to, um, uh, to uh, develop uh, H' prim divided by H on both these equations equal to the amplification beta. And then we reduce beta and we continue to develop this equation system and we will end up at this equation assuming that uh, uh, the focal uh, length f and f prime are symmetrical on both sides of the optics uh, and using the sign that means that f is equal to minus f prime and this will give us the, the lens formula and the idea here is that um, this formula, what it actually gives us, uh, it's an instrument 
to compute where the image will be in focus, where the, the focal plane will be located with respect to the principal plane on, on, the, uh, on the, uh, this side of the lens. Well, I'm sure some of you have been using a system camera for making photographs. And then you may also recognize lo the look of this lens that is normally assembled in front of the camera. And then you may also know that when you're making photographs of objects with different distance uh, to the camera, you may need to adjust the lens focus in order to get a very sharp image. And you do that by turning and rotating this part of the lens. And what you actually are doing then is that you're adjusting the distance and the position of the lens with respect to the focal plane array. Uh, and you are indeed applying this lens formula of a Gaussian thick lens. And now back to the uh, diagrams of this uh, lens system or this lens again. Uh, I think we can conclude that uh, using this, uh, what is called the cardinal e elements, the focal points here, the two of them together with the nodal points, this information is enough to actually describe the behavior of a lens. And indeed, uh, these uh, four uh, cardinal elements are also enough to describe, describe the behavior uh, of a larger lens system, this kind of lens that actually uh, consists out of several lenses, not only one lens. So it's a very thick system of lenses. And still you can use these cardinal elements to uh, describe the behavior of this lens system. Hey guys, you know what? I think we deserve a break here before we continue on the second part that will be related to uh, important properties of the lens system.